everyone. I'm Dr. Renee Mera, and today I'm talking to a musician. He's a singer, writer, composer, actor, and a chef. It's Richard Oliver Jr. from New York. And uh, also joining me from India is Veena Kondapoli. She's Richard's backup coordinator manager. Hi, Veena. Hey, hello. Okay. Richard, um, you produced a great single last year as a salute to our frontline heroes. It was mm. a COVID-19 project mm. called Hero. Mm. And this time you've come out with a new single, which was mm -hmm. just released. It's called When the Fire Comes. It's uh, your support and solidarity uh, to Ukraine. Yes, ma'am. So let's go first. Let's talk about mm. when fire comes and we'll go to hero as well. The, mm. All the unsung heroes, it's a salute to mm. them. And, mm -hmm. But the, when the fire comes, uh, it's up also on YouTube and mm -hmm. on your channel. That's and it's, today. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, 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 the lyrics are very intense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was meant to kind Tell of- Tell us a little uh, bit about this mm. project that you came up with. It was kind of the uh, creation of this was, um, I, I, I think I was more inspired after we witnessed, as everybody witnessed what was going on with this war, with so many emotions, so many things, uh, you know, we, we were going through. Same as, similar to COVID, you know, how I got inspired to write this song of gratitude to frontline workers that was just sacrificing so much. So as I'm looking at the news every day is... Ukraine and this, this uh, just atrocities and it just moved me to create something that I, I really feelings I guess I had inside that I needed to express right and and what could I do right I think everybody feels helpless in this situation is watching all this death destruction you know and I felt you know lyrics started to come for this project took up my guitar and then it started the melody started to come and I started to create this kind of reggae conscious type of message that I wanted to put out um, more on a um, humanitarian note, but also on a spiritual, uh, biblical note, you know, of the wrongs that are done, the evil that exists in the world, we beautiful world we live in. And, um, and the just that come, you know, the the things that come from it, you know, um, biblical, you know, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, you know, revenge is mine, say the Lord, you know, these things. And I felt um, I needed to express this um, feeling of um, from a biblical perspective as well. So you'll see in the video, if you look, you'll see a, a particular biblical reference as well um, in the film. And it kind of resonated to me. And I, I think I, I got to really, as an actor, I had to express myself um what I was really feeling was anger. It was disbelief. It was um, uncertainty, this um, un disbelief of just the atrocities of someone that could just do something to a child, children. That, and that, what really touched me was, was when all those children were killed, 150 something kids, and they put the strollers in the, in the, in the center of um, Ukraine. And I, that really moved me. Um, and then I I, I was watching some news on a particular organization, which the project is um, proceeds from the project is dedicated to in um, abundance.org, international.org, and what they were doing for displaced orphan children who were there, who were left that could not leave Ukraine in the war, and they had to care for these kids and feed them and needed funding. And I was so touched by the founder's message of um, all the ingenuity, ingenuitive things that he was doing to, you know maintain these kids their spirit their mental um, illness that they were going through the, so as well as feeding them with basics so that's where kind of you'll see a lot of those references in the in the video that i wanted to put that in of caring of empathy um that's what i loved about the the countries that took in so many people like poland and just opened their homes at that you'll see that in the film too so it's not just anger it's anger yes but it's also um passion it's also yes. uh, resilience it's also resolve it's the spirit of never giving up spirit of you unity uh, coming together and also, you know, spiritual as well as you know, something will come from this, right? It has to end, right? It, 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 there's some good that has to come out of evil, right? So that's what I'm kind of um, attempting to 
um, uh, per, pursue with this particular film. That's, so that's how it came to conception uh, from the beat to the guitar and I laid the vocals and I did the uh, production mastering for it. It was mastered by this maker. So in the beginning it was very hard because when you're doing a project of this magnitude, it's not like COVID is of course another topic it's a virus this is war right so it's like how do you budget this when you you know you don't have a lot of funding i asked vina can you give me a few thousand to produce this she says what we don't have no we have no money in the budget for the so i said how am i going to produce this i'm i'm led to i have to make this i have to get this out so she's like you got to work with well i guess what i have so i kind of turned my whole apartment into a hollywood studio green screen <laughs> cameras <laughs> and save five thousand uh, five about five thousand on the budget and I and I produced it. I was just this was a daily process of me. Of course, as a chef, I'm cooking. I'm running out. Oh, I gotta cook. I gotta cook. I'm cooking. Then I'm running back to the studio after. So it was a time um, process of maybe eight hours, intricate hours a day, working on this. And this is Mira. This was like lighting, right? Sound setup. This was position cropping as we just did make sure the frame is right <laughs> where do you stand all of these major things and it was just a lot of work it took me one month literally to pull this off and i'm just when i as artists when we see the finished product and when it moved me in post-production i said this is good this is good Six days ago, Russia's Vladimir Putin sought to shake the very foundations of the free world, thinking he could make it bend to his menacing ways. Instead, he met with a wall of strength. He met the Ukrainian people. And y'all will see us till the end. And protect us from the evil of men. They can do us nothing, nothing at all. And we will rise up when we fall. If we have joy, why should we fear? Don't you cry, mama. Don't you shed one tear. Cause the time will soon come, soon come our way My man get ready for your judgment day For we know that child feels all our pain When the fire comes they'll run, they'll run They will run, they will run And find no place Fire comes, they'll run, they'll run, they will run, they will run. Let us wait. Putin's latest attack on Ukraine was premeditated. Avenge is mine, say the Lord. Let's not hate. He rejected hate. repeated efforts at diplomacy. Pray for those who do us wrong and forgive. He we thought must the West forgive. and NATO wouldn't respond. Evil that men do, a father he But Putin was wrong. Please forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Mm. Uh, there's so much of passion in this video. There's anger. There's uh, faith and resilience mm. and the the spiritual underlying current in there. Mm. And. Um, Vina, I want to go to you and how this project came through. Yeah, I mean, Richard was planning to do this particular music video um, <clears throat> like two months ago. Um, he did tell me that he really wants to do it. Um, <clears throat> initially, we were thinking of, uh, you know, taking help or you know, bringing more crew members as we do an after show. Um, and then kind of uh, do an indoor shoot outside outdoor shoot and then combine everything for the music video 
um, initially he did uh, write the lyrics and he composed and you know he mastered the song i never actually knew the tune or anything about the song i just knew that you know he's working on it and maybe um, one month from then so we were thinking about like february 24 that's when the war started then um, in month of march that's when richard was thinking about this particular idea and he was telling me that he's going to write the song um unfortunately we did not have a lot of budget we did not have um budget because uh, pretty much um, the prices of all the crew members have increased after covid-19 even the equipment rental has increased and there there are delays if you will need to get the equipment rental or if you want to borrow it from any other crew members it's it's not as easy as it used to be when it was before covid um and then again you never know what comes like you know every time there is some virus kind of scare that goes on in all the countries like all over the world um then we were like okay let's not think about outdoor shooting let's just think about what we can do indoors what we can do with what we have and um to cut the cost yeah and um, the cost itself would decrease because it's only one location one person and i i mean i did ask richard if he wants at least one more person to handle the camera um but even that then there was a timing issue like there was one more person that i was working with but that person he did not have a lot of time ben richard was free so it was like okay fine we can't even do this so the second method did not work the last method which is the toughest one was using <laughs> and when when you are using the green screen setup and then i'm like no it's like four in the morning yeah. <laughs> exhausted <laughs> exhausted while gun hole uh, i just came out the kitchen <laughs> but so, i mean so you were able to do this in one month this was in a one mat once one month span in terms of uh pre production post production to uh the final final release uh, and the release was on may 6th may 6 it dropped on may 6 uh, on my official website all digital media spotify pandora it's everywhere um the music co comments are coming in now away for the reviews and press media you know i'm trying to get as many interviews as we can to spread the word of uh, local media and um of course um mainstream as well so packets went out literally a packet was on the sent overnight uh being asked me to send an overnight package to president biden that went on his desk yesterday mm -hmm. so that was sent overnight to uh, the president um to hopefully get it to president zelensky because i really wanted to express this and wanted him to know that this was created you know that someone you know way across the other continent was really um in solidarity with what he's doing you know he inspired the project as well as well as the all ukrainian people that um fought with so much resilience with nothing you know just <laughs> ingenuity it's so artistic and that's what drew me into this project mm -hmm. but uh, the financial part was very hard i should say vina can talk about that because it was it was frustrating because i knew what i needed but there was just no funds you know she was like I, we can i can take a thousand can you give me at least a thousand out the bank out the budget the company is where she's saying no we don't have it so it was it was killing my ideas and i was like oh you go back to the drawing board who no budget what that's i could take things out of a shot list you have the perfect shot list it's tough times it's yeah, tough yeah it was tough But Russia did just so. dropped on May 6 and how has been the response been very positive i mean this is just um sometimes i like to test things with friends you know family and different people who i don't know you know who don't even know what i what i do and some people even know i'm an award winning filmmaker i'm very low key so many people are like wow this is the, i love the sentiment with this i'm getting a lot of good positive reviews so okay. far i can't wait to read the reviews on youtube and um get the feedback that's that's what um draws us back and i and i want people to really express not just oh this video i want people to express their views about this war up uh, and the proceeds from this release are going to nationalinc.org great charity um or, uh, orphanage in ukraine is helping children who can't help themselves you know have no family have no one um and i was really drawn to this particular so of course there's many charities helping with it can but this one i was just very drawn in i saw the report on um 
it was on uh, CNN, this particular person, he was uh, talking about the hardships that they're having. They, they, imagine you can't move and can't move children. <laughs> they can't go anywhere. They have no family. They don't have any. So that moved me a certain way. I know how it feels to be abandoned, you know, and I have, you know, I've been through a few things that I want to share later when I produce uh, my first memoir, which I'm working on, the hardships I've overcome, mental illness, suicide. I've overcome a lot um, to get to this point of gratitude and understanding people and understanding people's pain and coming from nothing and having you know um you know overcome a lot so i want to so this that's why i was drawn to uh i think more of the countries that were taking so much empathy that came from this harbor with so much empathy around us more time like these are yeah. like very time sensitive time sensitive uh, projects and mm. projects and as well you know you if you want to do something you have to work right now it can't be like oh i'm gonna wait for the money i'm gonna wait for the investment <laughs> then yeah. it does work in that way i mean it's been almost like february 24th march april and you know, we're coming to may so it's like three months of war everything when you see that you don't want to stop yourself it's like you know what mm. you have a good song you have already come to here you know mm. whatever we can do let's do it you know mm. the budget wise i should say that richard uh, saved a lot of money with the green screen and without having the the right equipment even then it would have costed like five thousand dollars or mm. at least more. Five, the I think screen, way more mm -hmm. the composition and things like that but because he he can do so many things we have things in-house we have equipment in-house with the company that Vina. That's... And he saved a lot of money mm -hmm. so um it's a good thing because when you save a lot of money that the money that you can give back to the nonprofit organization is higher because you're covering your cost very quickly. Right? Mm. You're not losing mm. all the money that you're going to get mm. just to cover the cost. You're going to give it back. That's the main essence of why he actually did it. So, so I have, well, people can go mm. to your social media channel um, mm -hmm. and access the video. Yeah, they can go right yeah. to my official website, uh, richardoliviajr.com. And they can go right, the song is right there. They can download it. And the best thing about this, it's $2. But what I'm including is the lyrics. I really want people to read the lyrics. So I've included a lyric sheet with the download that, for the $2 purchase. Usually songs are 99 cents, but I put this as $2 and you get the lyrics. That's I, 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 um, Richard Olivia Jr. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go back. Uh, a year ago, you came up with a project, Hero. Hero. Our frontline mm. workers, essential mm. workers, have done so much in this pandemic. Mm. Mm. Huge, huge. Um, that that project was all shot in COVID nineteen. Um, again, there wasn't much budget for that. Um, kind of pulled a lot of people in. Uh, wore as many hats. I literally to get that done, I had to um. I had to really turn people into filmmakers. <laughs> I had to really train people how to. It, that's what's the amazing thing. Most people don't know the backstory behind that, but it was so much work. Um, I almost got arrested twice while filming key scenes, uh, particularly near hospitals. And then, um, so we, we was basically a lot of pre prep for that, being prepared for everything that could happen in order to get the shot. So um, that was a long, not a long process, a one, one day shoot. And we had to get, basically get everything, but there was a lot of technical things on the inside, different types of effect, mirror effects type of things that were going on that I could control in my apartment. That time I was living on um, Mary Hill. So I was very close. I was on Park Avenue at a loft space. So I basically used a lot of that space to cut the costs and uh, produce Hero. But I was inspired by that due to um, <clears throat> watching nurses in the beginning of the pandemic. I was a central worker. New York was locked down. We were losing a thousand people a day. And I was asked to go out by my agency to help, you know, feed a, feed a residents of New York, the homeless, the elderly, the people who could not um, go out of their homes. Um, so I teamed up with a, several chefs and so one million meals for New York. We were out every day. At that time, no vaccine. So we risked our life, basically. So it was in the process of doing that job and producing hero those were the two very strong things but what inspired me was the nurses that I would always pass the bus drivers that would always wave to me essential and we always like this because they see me with my chef jacket they know i'm working and we're all essential and the nurses were just so tight every nurse i saw was like 
exhausted. Like, I mean, just the walk. I see them on the train. They're like, it, so I was like, man, I, you know, they has to I have to create something of gratitude. They need somebody needs to recognize what the what they've been doing. And so I just got inspired with the whole concept of the nurse, which you'll see in the film. Um, who I express my thanks to her with beautiful lilies and i let i just give this beautiful um serenade to her this nurse how much we appreciate you so that was the hardest thing hardest thing shooting in the subway we had no permit so we had to do very things very quickly uh lucky new york city is very was very kind in terms of <laughs> um, they know you're filming and people so it was uh, it was a very interesting experience to get that done that was much harder than this Absolutely. Because you're outside, you have to deal with elements, MTA, 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 the door is closing. <laughs> no, we need to get the shot. <laughs> so it was a great, great move. But I, in I the think end, we all will be eternally grateful to all our yeah. frontline workers who've done mm. so much, you know, in gratitude always to our frontline Yes. Well, we did. Yeah. I didn't think we really knew the extent of what they did and the essential workers for what they did, the bodegas that were open. So it was a song, not just a reference to the frontline heroes. And I was inspired also by Dr. Roli Chohan, whose father passed. He was a frontline hero, um, was treating people in COVID. So the film was actually dedicated to him in memory of him, um, Dr. Ch uh, Roli Chohan's father. So that was beautiful. Um, I'm, I'm love, I, I love that sentiment of the frontline to the essential all working together for one purpose um, and, and one beautiful thing. That's why I decided to wear my chef's coat in the video to show that I'm essential and I'm appreciating the nurse right across the 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 um, the train train car with me, you know, appreciating her, you know, in such a way. So I think that's uh, 14 awards for the song, 12 awards, presidential acknowledgement from Joe Biden. It was big. It was, so that was a big project. That was a big, big project. We touched the president, you know. Um, so that was, it was a very beautiful thing. You know, I'm, I'm proud of that project. You know, the one, one project I'm very proud of. Um, um, it was, though, though it was a lot of, lot of hard work, a lot of logistic I'm planning. Sure. I'm sure. It was just, I was exhausted. <laughs> well, you know, you have your fingers, so many pies, you know, mm. rhyme impersonator. Ah, on a lighter, warmer. Entertainment note. show, lighter show, lighter note, comedy. <laughs> yes comedy interviews which you know which is fun you know interviewing you have the rhyme person show that's going to mm -hmm. now yeah it's still um it's still active uh still you know interviewing um uh, people different covering different events tribeca and different things uh the last event i think we did was tribeca and a few others but it's a, it's a lot of that show is a lot of work to like maintain you know you're doing youtube now so you you see youtube spaces you got right. there's a lot of work a lot of dedication so between that you know and trying to you know um and do my essential work, which I which I do, which I love doing, uh, giving back to New York, feeding the college kids, you know, different future leaders of tomorrow, <laughs> you know, and uh, young kids too worked in. So it's been it's been a ride. I haven't seen you, Renee. It was about so many. I wanted to catch That's up so much. I know you had seen me, but we all been like still connected in some way. I should say. Yes, of course, we all are. So Vina, you must be getting busy with the Rhyme Impersonator show as well, when it comes to India. Um. I mean, uh, we mm -hmm. we did it. I mean, the problem over Barbara. doing it in India um, was that I did not really no. get a good crew membership, uh, you know, to find the right crew. Um, but the way I have been helping out or I've been assisting is more on the back office, coordinating staff to actually do it in New York because the equipment and the person who all knows everything is over there and that is Richard. So my way of working has always been like bringing in people or the editor, that like the editor okay. you work with in India, the editor. Always did this. Hmm. Um, um, yeah, I mean, the time impersonator show, it was more active before COVID. After COVID, like everything yeah. shut down most of the things. And yeah. we did a few interviews online using Zoom. Um, What's the concept of the show? Uh, the when we actually created the Rhyme Impersonator show, it was more of a comedy web series. We had like five seasons, and in every season, there is an impersonation of a, either a famous character or a different nationality or a different um, uh, one who is a little unique. Oh, celebrities um, would open the show, so we'd have celebrity interviews. We went into celebrity interviews. We have an impersonation of the, mm -hmm. We have so every. 
Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Every episode would have a celebrity open up the show. So that's how the concept of the flow of the uh, the edit for each episode, uh, 30 episodes in total. I wanted to produce a season six. We're still waiting for Vina's approval on that for a COVID series on comedy, uh, COVID Diaries. We're bringing some comedy to COVID. So I'm still waiting for approval on that. So that's where the show is at right now. Um, we want to get more as COVID, you know, opens up more things going on. And Matt, you have so many events coming up. Fashion Week in New York. We're going to get back out there again. So it's just bringing in more um, crew members, uh, camera people to assist because you see I'm doing everything. You see Mira, you see me here, I'm editing. You see I'm doing, I can't do everything. So I need assistance. So hopefully when the budget gets where it needs to be, Vina can bring in those people. We can revive the show and make it better, you know, take it to the next level or maybe Netflix or hopefully it'll get picked up by somebody. Great channel or somewhere, Bravo or somewhere. Yeah. Well, after Hero, after When the Fire <clears throat> Comes, and after Rhyme Impersonator, what's next? What's next um, is, I, I think, a much bigger project, which has been in the, just in the works, um, romantic comedy feature, the first uh, romantic comedy feature film that I would like to produce here in New York and in India. So a lot of logistic planning, uh, great. I want to include a lot of uh, a lot of Bollywood celebrities I know to be in it. Very funny script. It's a very, it's like a cross-cultural type of script. I love it. Uh, very funny, great music, great vibe, great culture, food. It, 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 it happens a lot. And a great love story, you know. So um, I hope Hopefully we can get that on the table. That's what we're working on now with COVID Vitas. Let me know it's come from at least maybe 300,000 to 500,000 to produce now. So she's considering crowdfunding or different elite investors to come in to maybe shoot a trailer and then hopefully get that film going. It's been like a two year process of just not being able to execute it, you know, because of lack of funds, you know, so it's always, as filmmakers, we're always looking for money. (laughs) That's when ingenuity comes in. Yes. And ways to cut costs. Yes. Ways to cut the cost. Talking about food, Richard, Mm. you're a chef, Yes. What is your favorite dish? My favorite dish, I have to say, hmm. I'd say one of my favorite dishes is, um, I would say, uh, my curry chicken dish. Jamaican curry chicken dish. You are mine. Curry chicken. That's one mm-hmm. of my best dish. And of course, I love if Indian. I would have to say uh, my uh, biryani, my chicken biryani, which mm-hmm. is great. I put that, I put the pictures up. <laughs> Everybody went crazy. And that was uh, that's two of my favorite dishes, I should say. Uh, I love Indian food. I, my cuisine is Caribbean, but I like international fusion. So if I ever open a restaurant one day, it'd be Caribbean, but a little international fusion involved because I love everything. Basically. Indian, Italian, everything. Food brings us together. We all just came together and ate food together. This war would be over. Come, sit, eat. Let's talk. <laughs> it's music. It's food that brings people together. So exactly. we got both there. We got both of them. Solve everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, and oh, thank you, Renee. Passion. Keep that fire going. Mm. We got to keep it. That's all we can do is remain positive. I just want to say um, a big um, thank you to everybody that's been a part of this project. My prayers out for Ukraine. Um, if Zelensky is watching, I hope he gets my packet. The president gets my packet. It's great. I want them to know what happened here in New York and, and that we're thinking of them and caring for them. And we're ready to take in refugees here in New York. If I have space in my place, I'll take in somebody too. Hey. <laughs> you know, I could use a dog. <laughs> them, a little kid. Yeah. Always where the heart is, you know. <laughs> that's it. The heart you is know? open. That's what it is. And that's what we should end off on. So if anybody wants to access the video, you can yes. go to which is a website. www.youtube.com forward slash the rhyme impersonator. www.youtube.com forward slash the rhyme impersonator. You'll be able to um, see, go to the charity. So. So that's going to be a beautiful thing. So I hope uh, we, we win a lot of awards and things just um, take off from there. So too. Wish you all beautiful the best. Beautiful project. Richard. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to catch up. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, <laughs> like, um, mm-hmm. we would like each and everyone to actually listen to the song as well as purchase it. It's only like $2. I'll be back with you when you come up with a film. So oh, yes, I'll keep again. you updated on the success of it. Updated on this one. How much money we raised to keep you updated. Yes, please do. Oh, and okay. uh, we're blessed. We're so blessed. We're so blessed. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Renee.
Thank you. And I'm Dr. Renee Mera. Thank you for watching. Stay healthy, stay positive. Thank you.